Stayallday.com. You are now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and offensively, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of wait for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unified philosophy that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is, we are in part two of our two-part mini-series. Let me make sure it's going to be a two-part series. Maybe I got more points than that. Actually, I do have more points than that. This is going to be a three-part series. Excuse me. So part two of a three-part series of why you need deadlines. So I if y'all don't mind, I just like giving people so much game. Sometimes I don't even know all the game that I have lined up to give you all. And I surprise myself. So I surprise myself here by finding out that I have even more game to give you than I thought. If y'all don't have a problem with that, then we'll continue on. So uh, before we get into that, I'm going to remind you all of two things. First of all, my daily motivation text and Monday motivation guaranteed to have you focus sharp and on point to start your days or your week. All you got to do to get that is join my text community. It is free to join. So why wouldn't you do it? My number is 305-384-6894. Once we start sending that message again, you'll be getting it straight to your phone. Secondly, work on your game university. That is the place where I do all my coaching. You would like to get access to our programs like Bulletproof Mindset, like the Business Builder Framework, like the Sell Yourself course, like 30 Days of Discipline, like uh, all of our mindset and strategic trainings when it comes to specific things in your business such as utilizing collaborations, how to build strategic partnerships with other businesses, other people who are in your space, how to network and collaborate, how to create a value adder, how to put together the different steps of a sales funnel. All of that happens in workonyourgameuniversity.com. Again, workonyourgameuniversity.com. Go there, you can see what our program is, what you get, and how to get started. You can do that all right there on that page right now while you're listening to me. That link also down below in the description. So let's get into it again. Part two of a three part series. Why you need deadlines. Number four. Deadlines keep your life on schedule, which is good since our time is limited. All right, we want to keep our life lives on schedule, not just to say that we're on schedule, but because we have a limited amount of time. So the way that we manage our use of our limited time plays a big role in how much life we get out of our lives. Does everybody understand it? Everyone's life has a deadline. So. When I'm saying here in this series, why you need deadlines as if you don't already have one. Everybody listening to me has a deadline. You have at least one deadline, which is the day at which you die. All right. Everybody has that. All right. We all have that deadline, at least your, your natural life as a human living on earth, that deadline. We got that one. Now, depending on what religion you adhere to, you may believe in everlasting and eternal life. I'm talking about your life as a human in the flesh on earth. All right. We all got a deadline. We all will end at some point. So. I'm not telling you to go create deadlines that don't exist. You already got one. And it's the most important one of all of them is the day that it's over for you. Because most of the stuff that you're doing today don't matter when you get past that point, that deadline, right? So the difference with that deadline as opposed to the conscious ones that I'm talking about here in this series is that with the exception of suicide, you don't create your life deadline. The exception of killing yourself, you kill yourself, I guess you choose when you die. But other than that, most of us are just trying to stay alive as long as we can, right? So you don't you don't get to choose that deadline, but every other deadline you get to choose. You get to choose. Okay, I want to write a book. I'm going to take the next six months to write this book. And I say, well, how about we get that done in three months? All right. That's a deadline. Either way, it's a deadline. But let's let's make it a little bit more ambitious so we can move your move you to action. You have you have control over all the other deadlines that you set. And you know exactly how much time is remaining for you to reach those that or to reach your goals before the deadline. So you need to set them. Uh, and you get to choose, you can choose to rather set them of your own accord and of your own volition. This way you can keep your life on schedule, know exactly how much time you have to get things done. And even you can start to plan for your future in more detail and more specifically than you may be doing up to this point. All, right, all of those things can happen. Let me ask you a question. Do you think you would increase the quality of your life if you did that? Let me tell you the things you would do again. Your life is more on schedule. You know exactly how much time you have to get things done. So you're not just doing stuff as long as it takes. You actually have a time limit. You know exactly how much time is remaining. And you can plan for your future in more detail because you know exactly when you're done with this. You can move on to that so you can plan for the future. And you can be much more specific than you are right now. Would all of those things or any of those things increase the quality of your life? 
If the answer is yes, then you need to be using deadlines. Okay, that just sold you on the concept. Point number five. Today's topic, once again, we're on part, part two of a three-part series, why you need deadlines. Number five, no time for bullshitting. This is a good thing. <laughs> Isn't it a good thing if you eliminated the time that you used bullshitting? If that time just no longer existed, you probably would do a lot less bullshitting because there's no time for bullshit. Wouldn't that be good? If you just couldn't bullshit, well, you wouldn't bullshit. If you can't do something, you won't do it. You see, if there's no candy in the house, you can't eat it. There's no ice cream in the freezer. Freezer. You can't eat it. If there's no fried food on the table, you can't eat it. I mean, technically, you could always go get it. But again, remember that part I told you about human beings being lazy? All right, if something's not conveniently available to us, usually we don't take advantage of it because we're not willing to do the work to go get it. So if it's not convenient, usually we're okay without it. Everybody follow? So we take away your time for bullshitting, then you won't bullshit because you don't have any time to. See, when you have clear deadlines and specific amounts of time in which you need to get things done, you tend to get more done. You tend to be more on task and you tend to waste less time on nonsense. All of those things happen when you have a clear deadline and specific times. So when I say nonsense, what I mean is anything that is not directly related to you achieving the goals that you set out to achieve. So if you don't have goals, then we can't know what bullshit is and what bullshit is not. So once you're clear on your goals, anything that helps you get to those goals is good stuff. Do that. Schedule it. Put it on the calendar. And anything that is not amongst those things or is not directly related to those things is bullshit. So now you know exactly what's bullshit and what's not. Wouldn't that help you just be more clear as the decision making, more clear as to where you spend your time, more clear as to knowing if you're doing something that is productive slash effective or not? I talk to uh, I talk to entrepreneurs every day. And these are those are two buzzwords that come up a lot. Well, productive is the one that comes up the most is product productive. I just want to have more productivity. I want to be more productive. People don't often use the word effective, but that's what you're trying to get to. Right? You want to be productive. You want to be effective. You want to be efficient. And effective is about achieving the goal and doing it within a certain time frame. So I talked about this in the episode on uh, productivity, effectiveness, and efficiency, which was episode number 2670, by the way, any of you who hasn't listened to that yet. So would it help you in any way if all you did was just remove the nonsense and the time-wasting habits and activities and people? From your life. If you removed all the time wasting habits, time wasting activities, and people who tend to lead to you wasting time from your life, it's not, it's not, no such thing as a time wasting person. It's just that you engaging with this person usually costs you in time in ways that you see no return on investment. So if you just eliminated people who end up wasting time for you, who lead to wasted time for you, because it's not their fault, you allowed them to come in around you. It's not like they force their way in. You allowed them in somehow, some way. And the uh, habits and the activities. If you just eliminate those, you can free up a whole lot of time. Now you can use that time wisely. Don't waste it just because it's available to you or you found that time. Use that time wisely and productively and effectively to get more of your important things done. And important, again, must be, must be clearly defined. What does important mean for you? Setting deadlines does all these things in an indirect way. Because now everything on your schedule is something that you need to get done because it has a clear starting and ending time by which it must be completed. Remember what the word deadline means by definition. And you have pressure on yourself to get it done and a mandate to make sure it's completed again within that time frame. That's, that's what the deadline means. It means you have to eliminate the nonsense in order to stick to your schedule. You can't stick to your schedule by doing nonsense. So this is one of those tangential benefits of deadlines is that you really don't have space to mess around and play around. You just got to get things done. All right. So this is the reason why deadlines matter. This is another reason why, excuse me, deadlines matter so much because it eliminates the nonsense. And a lot of what we do in our day-to-day -day lives these days, especially uh, as we have smartphones and we are uh, arm, within arm's reach of access to the internet and social media and a whole bunch of messages and material and content from people who we don't know was not necessarily a bad thing. Talking about things that have no effect on our, no bearing on our goals and our desires for achievement, which is a bad thing. And it's an endless stream of it. There's an endless feed of it. They just keep feeding it to you, which is a bad thing because it tends to do a very good job of sucking away our time and attention. 
that time and attention that we should be using towards our goals. So this is one of the challenges of social media is that it draws our most valuable resources away from us, away from our goals and the things that we need to be doing and towards it and what everybody else is doing. And there is a that value and a benefit at certain times of two rather paying attention to what other people are doing and how they're doing it. But it's not all the time. And it's usually not nearly as much time as we give it when it comes to consuming material that, again, has no bearing on our success. So you got to be very careful with this stuff. So you eliminate that time for bullshit. You can get a lot more done in your life. Point number six. Today's topic, once again, is part. We're on part two of three. Why you need deadlines in your life. Number six. Source of motivation. A deadline can be a source of motivation. And what do I mean by this? While I trust discipline over motivation every day of the week, I'm a, I'm a big discipline guy, much more than motivation. I even tell you that motivation is for amateurs. Doesn't mean the motivation doesn't matter. Okay, motivation is useful in certain places and at certain times. I'm not telling you that don't use motivation. As I told you at the beginning of this episode, I have a text message. I call it the daily motivation. I got another one called the Monday Motivation. I used to put out a video every Monday on YouTube called the Weekly Motivation. That actually, the Weekly Motivation was the basis for work on your game. What we have now as a, when I say work on your game, I mean the company, the philosophy, this very show here. The basis for that was those Weekly Motivation videos that I put out. Even uh, the basis for uh, some of the books that I've written came from concepts that were started in those Weekly Motivation videos that I put out. Books like um, my Bulletproof Bundle, the Super You, the Mental Handbook, 100 Mental Game Best Practices, the Mirror Motivation. A lot of the concepts that I talk about in those books started as videos that I made in my weekly motivation series. I'm saying all that to say I'm not against motivation. Okay, I'm not against motivation. But if I had to pick between motivation and discipline, I'm taking discipline. Motivation is extremely useful when it is utilized properly. Motivation is simply the impetus that moves a person to do something. That's what motivation is. What makes you take action? Guess what? Pressure is a form of motivation. Because I knew that I needed to pay that. Remember I told you yesterday about the parking ticket that I had with Abington Township when I was 19? I knew I needed to pay the ticket. I just didn't do it. I just wasn't taking action. I was in stagnation. This is the law of inertia. The inertia had took over. And I was doing nothing about that parking ticket, even though consciously I knew I needed to do something. So when the township of Al- Abington rather, sent me that letter that said, we are going to haul you off to jail for 20 years if you don't pay that parking ticket. That's not what they said, but you get what I'm saying. That motivated me. The pressure of that threat, which I took seriously, motivated me to go pay the damn ticket. So motivation is useful because motivation often gets, up, gets us up off of our asses. It moves us to do stuff that we already consciously know we need to do, but we are choosing not to do. Let me say that again. Pressure is a good thing because it motivates us to get up off of our asses and do a thing that we consciously or unconsciously already know, quote unquote, already know. I hear this phrase a lot from people who are not doing something that they say they should be doing, that we already know we need to do, yet we are not doing. Everyone who's listening to this right now, you have a list of things in your life, whether you are aware of the list or not, that you know you need to do, yet you are doing absolutely nothing about. Everyone listening to this has a list. Everybody. No exceptions. Here's what I'm telling you about that list. Don't feel bad about the list because everybody has one. You will never not have a list, except maybe when you're close to dying or maybe you'll get close enough that you don't have a list. But for now, you got a list. Pressure will help you Start paring down that list. It'll help you start scratching things off of that list. So everyone here is, many of you probably are familiar with the concept of the bucket list. And the bucket list, the first time I heard of it, and I think it became very popular just in uh, normal conversation, was there was a movie that came out. I think the movie might have been called The Bucket List. I don't know. But it was a movie with this old guy who I think he was told that he was about to die. I think that's what it was. He got like some terminal diagnosis from a doctor. So he knew he was going to die. He didn't have much longer to live. So he wrote down a list of all these things. So, so what happened at first, he just started, I don't even remember the movie or even if I even saw the damn movie, but I'm just framing this out. He started thinking about you know, just looking back on his life because he saw he could see the end of the life, the light at the end of the tunnel. And he realized, oh, my life is almost over. What are, what are all the things that I did not do? All the time I wasted, all the stuff that I never got to experience in life. Let me write them down and let me try to do as many of them as I can before I die, which 
uh, back in the day, the phrase people used to use was called kicking the bucket. So dying was called kicking the bucket, whatever that means. So before I kick the bucket, let me do all these things. So when you hear the phrase, the bucket list, that's where it comes from. And some of you, you know, the Gen Yers and Gen Zers probably don't even know that, but your grandparents used to say that. So before I kick the bucket, here are the things that I need to do. So this guy wrote down a list of all the things he wanted to do. And the movie is all about him going and finding ways to do all this stuff before he died. And I'm guessing the great happy ending to the movie was he died, but he died happy. I don't even remember the movie, but I do. I remember the, the concept. And that's when people started saying bucket list. I don't even know if I even saw the movie itself. The whole point being, folks, the pressure of him knowing he was going to die motivated him to do all the stuff that he'd been thinking about his whole damn life being never done. All right. Does that sound familiar? And when I say does it sound familiar, what I mean is you have some things that you've been thinking about doing in your life, but you have not yet done. But if you had the proper pressure a, and or the proper motivation, you would probably find a way to start doing it. Yes or no? Okay. Let me let you in on the secret. Every human being on the planet answers yes to that question. Now, here's the difference between the people who end up making things happen in their lives and the people who don't, is that the people who end up making things happen find a way to create internal pressure or motivation or both to move themselves to actually do that shit instead of just continually thinking about it like what most people do. Now, you should rewind what I just said and listen to it over and over again 10 times. The difference between the people who make things happen in life and become stories, people get to tell their story or their stories get told because they did such interesting things. And interesting things means stuff that most people don't do. And it doesn't have to be you did something that is so far out of reach. It's just the fact that you did it, period. Because most people are fucking lazy. I already told you this. The difference is the people who get to tell their story or the people whose stories get told, because everybody has a story, but not everybody's story gets listened to, are the people who find a way to create the internal pressure and or motivation. And again, internal does not mean you have to do it all on your own. It just means you find a way to have it, whether someone else helps you get it, whether you crowdsource it from other places, someone gives it to you directly, or you find it on your own. They create the internal pressure and or motivation to do the things that they know they need to be doing or want to be doing as opposed to everybody else who sits around thinking about it until they die and they die with a list of stuff they never did. This is the difference. This is the reason why people like me exist. The reason why I work on your game university exists because see what we do in work on your game university is not just putting pressure on you or motivating you. You'll get a good amount of both of those. But the main thing that we do is I'm going to give you the insights to help you get past the mental blocks i.e. bullshit to have you thinking one way and that way of thinking is the exact thing stopping you from doing the stuff that you know you need to do or want to do or could do or would or should do. Biggest challenge for most people is mental. It is not, I want to jump out of the sky, I want to drop out of a, what do they call it? I want to do a skydive, but I can't afford to pay for the skydiving trip or I want to start a business, but I don't have the money or I want to go to Disney World, but it costs too much. But it's, those are not actually the things that are in your way. I'm not saying that those things don't matter. I'm not saying you ain't got to pay money to go to Disney World. What I'm saying is your mental frameworks are blocking you much more than your lack of money is blocking you. And this is one of the things that I help people get past when it comes to succeeding in your life, in your business, and producing results and performance. This is the reason why the university exists. This is the reason why I'm in the marketplace. So if I didn't do this, then I would have to find another thing that made me valuable in the marketplace. This is the thing. This is one of the main things that makes me valuable in the marketplace. What I just explained to you over the last 10 minutes. Or we just say the whole episode. Okay, motivation is the impetus that moves a person to do something. If a deadline moves you to take action, then more action rather than you would take without the deadline, then you need deadlines. Take more. If a deadline moves you to do stuff that you otherwise wouldn't do, you should use deadlines all the time so you can do more stuff that you never would have did. You get more stuff done before you die. All right, knowing that we all have the deadline of death. All right, remember that we're on a result and performance-based business. So anything that helps you perform at a higher level and produce more and better results, more consistently and more effectively, you should be using it all the time, as much as you can. If deadlines produce motivation, and motivation produces performance, and performance produces results, then deadlines should be the name of your game. Use them all the time. Why not? Let's recap today's class. This is part two or three. Why you need deadlines in your life. Number four, it keeps your life on schedule, which is good because your time is limited. Your life itself has a deadline, the time at which you will expire. And you understanding that, uh, that usually wakes people up when they get close to death. But you don't want to wait until you're 60, 70, 85 years old to start living 
you want to do it now while you have the, the youth and the, uh, the mental impetus to actually go and do stuff and you can do everything that you want to do. Number five, no time for bullshitting. All right, when you have clear deadlines and specific amounts of time in which to get things done, you tend to get more done and you do less nonsense and less time wasting activities, i.e. bullshit. Number six, source of motivation. Now, I trust discipline over motivation. That doesn't mean I don't value motivation. All right, motivation is very useful. Pressure is a form of motivation. Motivation just means what is the impetus that made you go do something. All right, if, you're, if a police officer says, move your car or I'm going to arrest you, then you move your car, uh, even if you didn't want to move the car because the officer's threat motivated you to go do something. All right, you get it? So motivation is very useful. So do not, do not uh, denounce the value of motivation, even though it may not be the most valuable way to get things done. It is a valuable way to get things done. Just like a, a Snickers bar is not the best meal, but if you're hungry, a Snickers bar might be good for you. All right. Uh, doctor said don't eat when don't eat. But you get the point of what I'm saying here. So if deadlines are what move you to action and they move you to get more done than you otherwise would have got done, then you should use deadlines all the time. Okay? And all of us get more done when we have deadlines. So any of you who live, works in a high pressure environment where you're always being given deadlines and a ton of work to get done in an impossible amount of time to get it done. All right, notice how you always get everything done. OK. You should put that same pressure on yourself when you're not at work. Why? Because you'll get more done. If that's your goal. If your goal is to get more done, then you should use it. Because if it worked in one place, it'll work in another place. Principles are universal, folks. And this deadline concept, this is a principle. This is a universal one. It does not have a inverse. All that said, tomorrow we're going to part three of the series. Again, why you need deadlines in your life, my text number is down below in the description. <coughs> Excuse me. Text me so you're in my text community. And... Also, work on your game, university. You want to work with me directly. You want to have me as your direct coach. And we have group programs. We have one-on-one -on -one options. We have done with you. We also have done for you options. Go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Link down below in the description. Work on your game. Dre, all day.